Right, what am I doing today? Boosh, it's another review and yet again it is another headlamp. Now, uh, Manventure were very kind enough to send me this for review, so uh, they sent me this for free for review, so bear that in mind, but it will be an honest review as it always is on this channel. Um, now, one thing I, w I do want to say in regards to Manventure, they are the UK official distributor for Nightcore stuff. So if you are going to buy Nightcore stuff in the UK, you may want to consider going through them. The reason being is, if you remember, um, I'll have a look here, I did a video about a fake. Um, I ended up getting a fake Nightcore, it was a Nightcore tube and it was a load of rubbish until somebody came along and said, look, Looking at that, it looks like a fake. I didn't go through Manventure and then it ended up with a knockoff and I, I didn't like the light. And then when I got the real one, it was much better. And I did a follow up on that. So bear that in mind. So you might want to go through Manventure, but thank you to them anyway. So anyway, on with the review. So this is the Nightcore UT32. And I was very interested when this came through because I thought UT32 and then I saw there was a little man running or a little lady running, I don't know. They're running along. Now this is aimed at, um, you don't have to use it for that, but it's certainly aimed at the trail running market. And as you know, on this channel, I do a lot of trail running. Um, in fact, there's a video here I did of running through, I've done quite a few running uh, videos, I think. This was me running in Scotland. I'm a big trail running fan, so I was, I was looking really, really looking forward to testing this out. And it's an innovative one, so if you look, it's not only a 1100 lumen cool white, and I will go through what all these are, don't worry, um, and then a 920 lumen penetrating throw. So what would, be, what would be the difference between a true vision flood there, 100 degrees, and you can see the, the little icon there, the person running along there, and then this person, that's more of a penetrating throw. In other words, you're trying to get distance. I'll go over that though when I open this up. So I'll give you some of the specifics. It is a dual output, so you have two LEDs on this one. It's a double emitter, and it comes in cool white and warm white. So I'll open it up. I'll go through the boring stuff first. So right, so there's nothing else in there. Boosh, stick that in the bin. There's a little thing from Nightcore if you wish to fill it in for warranty purposes. Put that to one side. There's your headband, which I'll go over because I quite liked. I like the design of that. There's the uh, instructions. I'm not going to go over them because I never do, but you should look at them. Uh, and here's some spare parts. Now you do get, I'll open this up so you can see. Now there's a, a spare O-ring in there. there. That's quite important. You're going to need the O-ring um, if you thread it by accident because it, it, it can happen. So for example, I'll show you where that goes. So you've got this threaded section which allows you entry into the unit. There's the battery there, I'll take this out. This just nullifies the unit in uh, transit there. So I'll zoom in a little bit there. So as you can see, that is the, which I'm agitating with the fingernail here. That is your O-ring. It just ensures waterproofing basically between the, the threaded sections. So I'll close that just for now. Uh, and one of the other things you get is you get some spare buttons. Now there's two buttons on this. One has a little nub on it, which means without having to look, you can tell which one you're pressing because there's two and they're identical other than that little nub. So you've got the nub one on the left and the plain one on the right. That, that the nub one I know from using it is cool white and this is the warm white so there's some spares if you do need them you've got your spare o-ring there which I've explained the purpose of and you get a clip so if you want to use this like a standard 90 degree light um, if you want to clip it onto things there's a little section there bang you can do that you can clip it into pockets it's not a bad clip Quite sturdy pretty decent um, I've only used it on two occasions it's not deep carry but that's because you've got quite a bulbous head here so your pocket is going to come up there and this section here is going to protrude at the top there but it wasn't too bad not 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 too bad and it's not taking the paint off as you can see pretty decent decent anodization on this so we'll get that out of the way because I want to discuss this right now this is your section which allows you to put it on your head basically now it's a three-pointer so what do I mean by a three-pointer well, this section goes around the circumference of the skull so this goes around your head and this this is obviously facing to the front and then this goes over the top now what's the point of that well on these slightly heavier and i say heavier but this isn't a very heavy light um i mean an extreme example would be something like the astrolux hl01 here i mean it's like a big meat cleaver for bashing pork chops but you really need a three pointer because otherwise you get droop in other words this will droop forward because there's only so much and you don't want that too tight otherwise you're going to give yourself a tension headache basically 
So it does come with a 3.8, even though this is pretty light. Um, I, was, I mean, the battery's in this and it's not too bad. Um, it was absolutely fine for running because you don't want a heavy headlamp when you're running. The reasons for that are, if you're walking along, a headlamp weight doesn't really matter. But as soon as you increase pace and energy comes into the matter, it bounces and it becomes uncomfortable. Luckily, they chose to make this out of rubber. So as this pushes against the skin, it doesn't cause any problems. There's no metal to bang against you. And one thing I did like about this design was, yes, it's got like a, a flashing on here to reflect light, which is for safety reasons. Now, you, can you see behind the, the branding there, you've got a holes which allow your skin to breathe very good. It reminds me of the one I did recently. I did a review of, uh, no, I don't think I've got it with me. No, I haven't. I, I, the problem is I have so many, so many different headbands, as you can see, I can't keep up. Um, but the quality was definitely up there. Um, I really appreciate the fact that it's got these holes in for running, especially. And this, this uh, gripped nicely on the skin and it's supposed to stop sweat. Um, I, I'm quite a sweater, but I don't wear beanies or I have long hair, so I, I let the wind to my skin anyway. So it wasn't certainly wasn't dripping down my face. I don't live in a mega hot environment, luckily. Um, one thing of note is if you look at this, it's slightly bigger on the left hand side than the right. In other words, and I'll show you why that might be. So when you put this through, and I'll show you how you would do that. So you would put it through here. Like that, just straight through, no problem. I see no problem, I can't manage it there. Right, so you put it through like that. And then this will this will go into the grooved section like that. Now if you notice, this grooved section is slightly higher. It's prouder in comparison to that. So you put it onto this section there. Now, I'm not sure why they've chosen that design because what it means is you can't reverse it. Whereas on a lot of the designs, you know, like the Lumen Top one, which I had a look at recently, um, each side is exactly the same size, as is the case on most of these ones. There's the Sofa and SP40 one there. And again, same, same on both sides. What this means is when this is on your head, it means you, it's, I presume it's, it's for right hand preferential treatment there. Um, so it's always going to be on the right hand side, which is fair enough. If, they, if they've chosen to do that, it certainly isn't going to cause a problem unless maybe you had one arm, which means you're going to have to reach over. But there's, that's probably a small proportion of the population. So no problems there. I like this. I was able to tighten this nicely over the top and the side without getting a headache. Um, and it worked. This is f it's just flexible enough, but not too flexible where it's floppy. Uh, no problems with that, um, had no, no issues. And this certainly isn't stinking a sweat or anything. I don't know if there's any sort of antibacterial surface on that. I can't smell that because normally on sports equipment, you can smell the treatments, um, but and it doesn't see anything in the uh, literature, but you shouldn't need that. And you can, you, can, you can clean that off, no problem. So let's get that out of the way. Right, let's discuss this because it's very interesting. So you've got two emitters. So you've got your two buttons, and then you've got two emitters. Now we'll get a close up. So there is emitter one. Now, as you can see, um, you've got your LED down the bottom there, and then it's surrounded by a almost smooth reflector. Okay, now bear that in mind, and I'm going to explain the difference. And then for flip right over 180 degrees, there is the other reflector. Now, in fact, I've got that the wrong way around. That isn't the cool white, and I'll prove it. There you go, that's warm. And then there's white, so sorry, I do apologize. So you've got smooth for your warm emitter. And then for the cool white, you've got an orange peel reflector. Now, can you see the outside there? Surrounding that is orange peel. Now I'm gonna quickly go over and explain what that means. So if you don't wanna hear that, you can, you can quickly skip this section, but I think it bears repeating, especially in regards to this light, because it's important. So if I can, if I can find a pen, there's one. Okay, so normally you have your LED. Consider this the torch, and this is a, a cross section. And light comes out willy-nilly, it goes all over the shop. It's particularly wasteful, and it also comes back in your eyes, although that's not gonna be an issue on a headlamp because it's gonna be out of the uh, line of sight of the eyes. So you wanna try and drive that light in, in, in essence. So one way to do that is, if you imagine there's your LED, and again, this is a cross section. You have an empty section there, now imagine this is a reflective ball. Now this is a smooth reflective surface. So as the light comes out, you get what's called spill. So it hits the ground like that. There's all your spill. And then the directed bounced and driven light gives you your spot. Okay, now what's the purpose of that? Well, I'll show you and we'll, I'll show you that in here. So here's the smooth reflector, okay? So we'll turn that on. Hang on. 
there sorry i've got that the wrong around okay so there's your cool white light i'll just show you that there if it zooms in so here's sorry orange peel so i'll start with the warm so we'll go back to warm right so there's warm okay so let's have a little look at what's happening here in fact i'll move that pen out of the way okay so here's the smooth reflector now as you can see there are marked zones so you have your spill here and then you have a section here and okay see how it's obscuring detail now that's one of the problems with getting through so we'll turn that off momentarily so as you can see it's obscuring detail smooth reflectors give distance so what you're trying to get there is you're trying to get distance and throw that's not necessarily what you want when you're trail running all the time you sometimes you want something close up you just want to look at your feet for example so that's where this would come in so this is your cool white so if we turn that on it should go straight to cool white so there's cool white now can you see how that's obscured less or to a lesser degree anyway at a similar output so what's happening there is you've still got your spill but there's a transition zone between the two zones so what's happening is again imagine a cross section so you've got your led but an orange peel reflector or op the sometimes shortened to it's just like an orange peel so what happens is you still get your spill yes and your spot but there's a transition between the two zones so it's better for up close in other words it's less irritating so you've got one for distance and one for close up now putting that to one side you're probably thinking oh, well okay what's the point in these two tints well let's discuss that now so the tints that this comes with you've got your cool white so we'll go to there that's your cool white now that is using a cree xp hyphen l2v6 um, don't worry about all these long abbreviations I'm using here and names, but in, in essence that is running at about 5700K. Now K just stands for Kelvin, and what you're, what you're describing there is you're describing the colour of the light. So I'll put a thing on the bottom here. So here's a little, a little thing on the bottom. So as you can see right on the bottom of the scale, you've got a very warm... Um, yellowy light at about 3000 k okay now that's what the other the other emitter is coming in but the cool white is way up the top it's not as it's not right up the top you, about 6500 is when you get the, the ice whites and super cool whites but this is a, a 5700 k um so if, what what they're trying to do is they're giving you the best of both worlds because in regards to tints some people prefer a warmer tint and some people prefer a cool tint this is giving you both but there's also a specific reason why they would be existing on this light so for example it's said that if you use a warmer tint you're going to get better through there are various reasons for that one of them is you get less backscatter in other words the beam itself is less apparent to the eye so I'll try and explain that with an image, basically. So if you imagine, here's me minding my own business, having a laugh with a headlamp on. Now, if I'm using a cool white, I c the, the beam is quite apparent. So my eyes are having to look through that beam to see this light that I'm that's hitting the surface. So I'm losing a little bit of visibility of this through virtue of the fact I'm having to look through this beam. Now, if I use a warm beam, you get less backscatter. So it, there's less of this coming back to the eye and you're getting you can look through and more easily see this also i mean the people in the comments section will probably back this up but um it's certainly apparent on um, white light is certainly more reflective and it can obscure vision slightly more on um, highly reflective surfaces or wet surfaces so there's pros and cons for each and i think they've chosen wisely to do it the way they've done it so what they've done is on the orange peel reflector they've used cool white so there's cool white because you're not you're not after distance and remember it's not the best for distance however if you swap to warm which is better to get distance they've intelligently used the smooth reflector so i think they've done this right um, not just an innovative design but they've actually thought about this okay so enough blabbing on about that we'll get rid of that and i'll go through some of the specifications of this so like i say you've got your cool white your cree uh, XP, I think it's the hyphen L2V6 at 5700K uh, 5, there, and you're getting about 1100 lumens. Those are night cause figures, not mine. Um, and then on top of that, the warm white, it runs slightly lower. It's only doing about 920 lumens. You really, not, most people aren't going to notice much of a distance difference. Yes, there is, but there's also going to be a difference between a cool white and a warm anyway. Visually, the look, one looks brighter than the other anyway. Um, and that's way down at 3000K. 
and that's the Cree XP hyphen LV6. So decent choice there, decent Cree, uh, genuine Cree emitters. Um, I've got no problems with them. I really enjoyed using this light. In fact, I'll put a few pics up here now. Here's a few shots there when it went out, just to show you the difference between these beams. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna do some extensive beam shots just to show you. And I have been out on trail runs on a number of occasions and I've carried this for a few weeks. Okay, so enough daft pictures, let's get rid of them. Poof. Okay, right, so back to the specification. So this is an IP68. Now, what does IP68 mean? IP just stands for ingress protection. In other words, that's posh for can anything get in? So the first figure, the six, means it is dust proof. This isn't going to get dust and sand in it. You're fine with that. And the last figure, so the IP68, means it is waterproof up to two meters. So if you drop that in two meters of water, two meters of water pushing down, trying to get in, it isn't going to get in as long as that's tightened and you haven't broken either of these lenses here. So excellent. Even though they've got buttons with gaps there, IP, it's rated to IPX8. You don't have to worry about water. I was very appreciative of that. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, because I do complain a lot this has USB charging, but it goes about it in a totally different way. So normally one of the methods for USB charging is, here's the SP, uh, so an SP40, very cheap light here. They put these daft flaps on. Now the problems with these daft flaps is you lose waterproof and I don't want to go out for a run with this. And then there's a massive downpour and then it fails. How would you get home? With this, you don't have to worry. It's IPX8. So you're probably thinking, so how do you charge it then? Well, you charge it with the battery so the battery actually has a charging circuit built in you have to use the old style micro usb so we'll we'll zoom in there so at the top of the battery there you can see if you plug in the um, micro usb it will light up red and then when it is done charging it changes and i'll show you that now so yeah, there's your little leds there and it is a button top never had any problems with this it's been decent the only thing i would have liked to have seen more but i understand that by adding this charging section you're losing capacity slightly so rather than something like a 18650 samsung 30q where you get about 3000 um, milliamp hours this is this is only 2600 milliamp hours so you're losing about 400 milliamp hours not a great deal anyway um you can just turn the turn the mode down slightly but uh, it by virtue of that fact, it means you are able to charge us on the go. Um, so that feature's there. I mean, you could say, well, hang on, what about um, using um, magnetic charging? Well, the problem is that's gonna add weight and by adding more and more and more, it becomes less of a running light and more of a heavy duty light, which isn't necessarily what you want. Okay, so moving on from that, it has a one meter drop rate. And so in other words, if you drop this from one meter, it's still gonna function according to Nightcore and their testing. I would have liked to have seen a 1.5, which is commensurate to most of these lights, but that's how they've chosen to design it. And I presume this is slightly more fragile um, because of the nature of this with the dual emitters. Um, um, and the same with, um, you're losing a lot of um, cloud here when it comes to, in, in space, um, is it a premium? So it, it, it has to use a thermal step down. So when it reaches a certain temperature, if you're in turbo mode, it will reduce its output in order to maintain an output. Um, I didn't have many problems with that. I certainly wouldn't be running with this in turbo anyway because it wouldn't really give you enough time, especially if you're on a super long run. I'll go over the times in a moment. Um, so I, I was I used it prim primarily on high setting um, and the one just below that, depending on how much I needed to see or what speed I was doing and things like that. And certainly for walking about and things like that, it's been absolutely fine. I've had no problems. Okay, so it does have a battery check mode and I'll show you that, which is an added feature bonus. So what you do is, Imagine you've just put a cell in and then you watch the emitter. So put your cell in and then one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so what that means is 4.2. So you probably think, what on earth is a 4.2? And I'll show you in the manual because some people aren't aware of this. They're probably thinking, well, is that a percentage? Well, no, it's not. So if you look at this section here, so 18650 battery, so you've got full power, 4.2 volts. And then as the capacity drops and drops and drops, you're getting less of a voltage output, so it goes 3.9, 3.7. So once it reaches lower than 3.5 volts, you really wanna be starting to charge it. You don't wanna let your batteries get too low, otherwise you can possibly damage them. Okay, so how do you use this thing? It's got quite a simple UI, so we'll quickly go over that. So to make it function, there's no E lockout, so you actually have to press two buttons. Normally I complain if there isn't, if there isn't an E lockout, but in this instance it doesn't really matter because the chances of pressing both buttons is remote. So what you do is you press both. So hold down both and it turns on, 
hold them again and it turns off dead simple that's your on and off so your levels you turn it on and we're on cool white there so i know that i need to use the nubbed button you see it there okay so you're using that so when you press it it goes through the modes so you've got low medium high low medium high and then if you want turbo long press there's turbo now obviously that will step down so what i'll do is i'll let that run slightly and i'll get the temperature me measure there it is okay so we'll get this turned on let's let's have a look at some of these temperatures here so what have we got here so we've got about 28 i just want to see when this steps down so 28 there it's just stepped down so about 28 29 degrees that's probably slightly behind because it's measuring the temperature on the outside not the inside so about tw about 30 degrees so it steps down rather rapidly from turbo um, i would have preferred to have seen that step down less quickly um, but i understand that because there's not a lot of physical metal here you're not that's not able to use it as a heat sink so it will step down r r rather rapidly but you can quickly press it back on again there and go straight back to the table if you want you're not going to cause any damage there and but then obviously it's going to step down again so we'll turn that off um now on the other one or we'll turn that off so if turn it back on if you want to go to the other emitter you just press the, the non-nubbed button so see how you can switch between the two so warm cool warm cool dead symbol and then within that mode it's exactly the same so you've got your different modes so low medium high low medium high and then if you want turbo long press there's turbo and then back to normal again and off so those are your main ones now you do have some special modes in fact you have two special modes so they're triple press so if you want to go one two three there's your sos mode i'll cover that slightly because it can be a bit irritating to watch so that's your sos so it's going to blink out um so i'll show you so one two three and then there's going to be three slow one two three so it's the national um sos signal if you, and if you press that again it's going to go to a beacon mode so what's beacon mode well again sos and beacon mode they go to maximum output but just rapidly and in this instance it's rapidly pulsing on and then off 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 on so you can use that as a beacon mode or a rally point or something like that that would be actually quite useful for certain things even if you got lost and you needed to help rescue us find you for example there's various uses for that so we'll turn that off there you go there you go right okay so we're back to normal so those are your things now i just want to quickly go over the statistics for those outputs so if we are on cool there's cool so you've got low 70 lumens you're getting 18 hours out of that on their battery with night course figures then medium 200 lumens eight hours you can get more stuff done especially at arm's length then high 400 um lumens you're getting nearly up to four hours that's the one i used for running so there's no step down on that um it was brilliant it was more than enough to run even when i was going up and down bridges and things like that and, and down little funny bits and, and across rivers i had no issues with that um that was spot on um and nearly three hours is more than enough for a run good you know unless you want to do mega marathons in which case you probably want a different kind of light for that anyway um, and it's very similar with the warm so we'll swatch to the warm there so there's do, do. there's low so again low is about 60 lumens 18 hours medium 170 lumens at eight hours high 370 lumens so as you can see the warm is slightly less than the cool white but very similar run time so three hours 45 minutes on that nearly up to four hours and then turbo is 920 with an hour and a half and on the white light i think it's it's exactly the same it's an hour and a half but you're getting 1100 lumens so slightly more so what let's quickly go over some pros and cons so pros um, one thing I, I was very happy to see on the box as you can see is a five-year warranty and it's a no quibble one the will honor that so that i, I like to see a nice warranty like that uh, five years uh, is brilliant i was on about the army tech in a, in a video i did just recently and i was praising them for that so nice to see a nice warranty um dual beam very innovative i've never seen anything like this yes you can get lights certainly headlamps where they have dual beams uh, one example would be the hc65 from nightcore again another brilliant nightcore that i loved and i give a very high mark to you have your cool white beam there there's your cool white beam and you also have a high cri tri there 
um, total internal reflection lens there again brilliant and it's a high CRI which is nice to see and then that's even got another mode if you press all the way down you've got red light mode so you could argue why did they not just do it like this where you had one there and then a one next to it and then you could have put a heat sink behind but I think I prefer this design because it means you can take it out and clip it on things and use it this sort of thing you can't it doesn't come out of the holder it's it's for your head and only for your head where with this you have more options and you can tail stand it and things like that you can even stand it like that because that's they've almost um drip drop bits in here to make it a bit more of a heat sink okay so what else it's compact it's pretty compact for an 18650 i mean look if you compare it to the sp40 which i love look much smaller and if you compare it to the gargantuan uh astrolux hl01 look massive difference in size there massive I mean that looks like Thor's hammer. It's in comparison, it's massive. So, and again, even comparing it to something like, and I love this, like the Skill Hunt HO3. Not a lot of difference. It's actually shorter, and this is a beautiful, nice, slim light. So, by virtue of that, you can see how slim and compact this actually is. They've done an exceptional job. I was very happy with that, especially when you're running, you want something compact. So, what else? I really like the headband. There it is. I'll, this does make a difference. I, I thought, uh, what are they trying to do here? They're trying to save material, but they're not. They've punched that out. It seems to be some sort of laser cut there. Nice. It works. It's very light. It didn't have any rough, silly bits. This is just taut enough with a little bit of torsion. Fine. Again, I'm not sure why it has to orientate to the right, but that's how they've chosen to design it. Unless you've got one arm, it's probably not an issue. Um, it's U USB rechargeable battery, um, but I'll go over one slight down point with that, but that's nice to see. And it's just, it's innovative. I really appreciate the fact it's innovative. I mean, some people could say, well, hang on, it hasn't got a magnetic base like a lot of them. You know, a lot of these other ones, they've got mag bases and you can stick them on things. Well, yes, they have, but by adding a magnet you're adding weight and this isn't what this light's for if you look on the box it's for running basically you don't have to use it for running but it's it's about lightness and this is particularly light so are there any cons to this yes there's a few um slightly lower battery capacity instead of about 30 sorry 3000 milliamp hours you're getting about 2600 not the end of the world though because as you've seen the run times are perfectly adequate for going running and things like that and you can certainly flip them down a little bit um, and the one metre drop rate and I would have preferred to have seen 1.5 because I've fallen loads of times running and fallen going over things so 1.5 would have been better to see but I presume it's slightly more fragile because of this design here. Um, you know, it's going to be slightly more prevalent for um, damage but just be careful and don't go throwing it around. So. I'll just quickly compare it and then we'll, we'll get outside and we'll actually have a look at the damn thing. So let's have a look. So I compared it there before, but I mean, massive difference here. This is huge. You just wouldn't wear that on your head. It's far too heavy. Even the beautiful little Skill Hunt HO3, beautiful TIR to spread the beam. Um, again, this is still smaller, so it's actually beat one of my favourites in size, and I love this light, and I use this regularly. So well done, Nightcore. Well done, good job. Um, comparing it to the two heavyweight in regards material, anyway. You've got the Illuminate Compass R, very expensive, you know, this is over 100 quid. Um, and the Army Tech, again, another expensive one. These have bigger ratings, um, you know, 10 meter drop rating on this, for example. This is also a 2 meter um, waterproofing. These are both IPX, but they have mag bases and mag charging, which adds to weight and it adds to size. So, in regards to both of these, it's much, much smaller, which again is what you don't want. You want something small hanging off your head when you're trying to run. So, again, it's beating those. It's much lighter because it hasn't got any, any superfluous stuff on. Um, Lengthwise, it certainly isn't as good as the, uh, this is the, I always forget this one, the Lumentop HL3A, but this is a 90 degrees angle and you could argue, well, this is protruding more, so it's slightly, slightly more liable to jiggle when you're running. So I probably wouldn't use this for running, whereas this is flush against the head, I would probably prefer this. Um, and I'm certainly not going to compare it to a super heavyweight like the PL47 Gen 2 here by Fireflies, because this is just massive, huge output, which you wouldn't use for running anyway, because it certainly wouldn't last. And it's massively heavy in comparison to this so get them out of the way so i've gone over the good points and the bad points let's give this marks out of 10 i was going to give it an eight but i'm going to have to give it nine because let's let's think about this five-year warranty dual beam you've got the, the high ends of the spectrum and the low ends of the spectrum in regards to tints it's a thrower it's also a orange peel reflector it's compact quite lightweight good good headband usb charging inside 
and I, th I just think it's innovative and I've, I'm it's so refreshing to look at something brand new i really 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 enjoyed testing this out especially trying all the different modes and and the different tints i thoroughly enjoyed testing this and running i thought oh is this a gimmick no it works as a running light or certainly did for me and um, but if you are going to trail run at night you know trail run on certain trail runs because i don't want you twisting your ankle and i certainly don't want you in any danger there um, and there's not a lot of cons yes i prefer slightly bigger drop rating but not the end of the world and the battery capacity could be slightly bigger but the bigger the battery the heavier it is and that's not what you want for running so nine out of ten well done light core i'm so pleased to see something innovative from you simple ui it's on off you can go straight to beams and straight to turbo i've got no problems with that brilliant nine out of ten so enough of me waffling let's quickly get outside and look at plenty of beam shots goodbye